Learning data structures and algorithms is hard. If you're like most, you spend a lot of time doing leak code problems, but don't feel like you're improving. I used to struggle with algorithms too, so I know what the grind feels like. Whenever I looked at a solution to a problem, I would feel hopeless because I would have never thought of that on my own. The truth is, most people struggle with learning algorithms because their learning lacks structure. Learning is a frustrating grind if you don't have a system. Today I want to talk to you about the system that I use to master data structures and algorithms. The same two-step system I use to pass my interviews at Google. If you're new here, hey, I'm Alvin. I'm an ex-Google software engineer and for the last decade I've been featured around the web, teaching thousands of developers the skills they need to land their dream job. Part 1. Gradual Progression the reason people struggle with learning data structures and algorithms is because the material becomes too difficult too fast. The solution is simple. Start with very basic problems and study more complex problems slowly, over time. Sounds straightforward, right? Mastering the fundamentals is exactly what separates beginners from the advanced. Most people get this step wrong though. The common advice is to start with array and string problems, and then do linked lists, and then do binary trees, and so on. You've probably heard this advice many times. While this is correct advice, it's not useful advice. The problem is that this advice is too broad to be useful. It's like if you wanted a recipe for spaghetti and the recipe literally said, step one, cook the pasta, and then step two, cook the sauce. It's correct, but not useful. If you're a beginner cook, you wanna know exactly what to do with every small detail of the recipe. What are the ingredients, how much to use, how to chop them, and so on. The same goes for data structures and algorithms. Okay, so you know that you need to start by studying array problems. But which array problems? Many people will say to do the easy ones on leak code. The problem is, is that there's so much inconsistency with the difficulty labels. Easy is very subjective. I'm proud to admit that I've attempted some leak code easy problems that have made me question my career choice, and I teach data structures for a living. Following vague advice like do the easy problems first is exactly why most people struggle to learn data structures and algorithms. Just because a problem is labeled easy on leak code doesn't mean that it's simple or obvious. Difficulty is relative. It depends on what problems you solved previously. This means that the key to learning algorithms is to do problems so that the difficulty increases gradually. You need gradual progression. If the difficulty grows slowly, then your learning will be smoother. If you learn smoother, you'll learn faster. After teaching software engineers for almost a decade now, here's what I know. When someone is stuck on a problem and frustrated by it, it's because that the problem is too far above their current abilities. This is the learning gap. It's the difference between what we already know and what we need to know to solve the current problem. This learning gap is critical. The learning gap between problems can either make your learning smooth or slow your progress to a halt. Managing the learning gap is all about balance. Now you don't want to get rid of the learning gap completely. If you did, you would never improve. You'd be stuck as a beginner. You'd hit a plateau and your progress would stagnate. On the other hand, you don't want to make the learning gap too big. If the learning gap for a problem is too large, you won't be able to overcome it. Or if you do overcome it, it will take far too much time. You'll spend a lot of time stuck and you won't feel like you actually learned much. When you get really stuck on a problem, it means that the difficulty gap is too large. It doesn't mean that you'll never be able to solve this new problem. What it means is, maybe you shouldn't try that problem right now. Instead, you need to practice another problem first that helps bridge this gap. This is how you'll learn smoothly. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you should never feel challenged or stuck when you study. I am saying that you need the right amount of challenge. You only need to increase the difficulty ever so slightly as you practice. Progressing the difficulty slowly is how you'll build firm understanding of the concepts. Unfortunately, Lead Code was not designed for this type of gradual progression. Sure, there are the Lead Code 75 and 150 lists that try to structure the learning, but they still fail to smooth out the learning curve. It's because the problems on Lead Code were never designed to form a learning sequence. The learning gap between some problems is still too large. I'll show you what a good problem progression looks like. Let's say that you're totally new to data structures and algorithms. Since the first topic is arrays, start with these four array problems first. Problem one. Print every element of an array. Problem two, find the total sum of an array. Problem three, find the maximum value of an array. And problem four, find if a value exists in an array.
The point of these problems is to solve them manually without using built-in methods that solve them in one line. You won't find these four problems on leak code. You might even think that these problems are way too easy to be useful. I'm asking you to solve these problems because they serve a purpose, and you'll see that purpose in a bit. And besides, if they're too easy for you, then no big deal, you should be able to code them up in five minutes. I want you to understand what a gradual progression is, so let's look at the solution to these four problems. Solution one, just loop through the elements, easy peasy. Solution two, loop through the elements again, but maintain an outer variable so that you can accumulate the sum. Solution three, loop again and maintain an outer variable again, but use an if statement to manage the variable. Solution four, loop and if statement again, but be careful of the two different return values. There are clear similarities between these four problems. They all require the core mechanic of looping through the array. But they each feature a small logical difference around this core looping pattern. The sequence starts off very simple and gets a little more complex with every problem. You probably already know how to do these. Regardless, this is what a good learning sequence looks like. Okay, so let's say that arrays are easy for you, and now you want to learn some linked lists. Here are the four linked list problems you should start with. Problem one, print every element of a linked list. Problem two, find the total sum of a linked list. Problem three, find the maximum value of a linked list. And problem four, find if a value exists in a linked list. Sound familiar? These problems require the same logic as before, but for a different data structure. This is where the magic of gradual progression happens. The logic from the array problems will directly translate to the logic of the linked list problems. This means that you only really need to focus on the new element of the problem, which is the linked list part. You might not be familiar with linked lists right now, but let's look at the solutions anyway. Even if you haven't learned linked lists yet, you'll still see why these problems form a good progression. Solution one, just iterate through the linked list. Solution two, iterate through the list again, but maintain an outer variable so that you can accumulate the sum. Solution three, iterate again and maintain an outer variable again, but use an if statement to manage the variable. And solution four, iterate an if statement again, but be careful of the two different return values. All four of these problems require the core pattern of iterating through a linked list. Again, the sequence starts easy and gets a little more complex with each problem. Here is why gradual progression is so effective. Not only are these four linked list problems similar to each other, but these problems are similar to the array problems I already mentioned. These overlapping patterns allow you to leverage your previous understanding against new topics. The sequence builds gradually, so at any point, you don't get too stuck. The progression is smooth. You won't find a progression like this on lead code, not on the blind 75, the lead code 150, or the whatever 100. Gradual progression should be at the heart of your study strategy. Guess what problems I teach you if you wanted to learn binary trees? Yep, you already know. There's a clear progression through these four tree problems, and they overlap with the array and linked list problems we already discussed. Now, obviously, if I really wanted to teach you arrays, linked lists, and trees, we would do more than four problems from each topic. The point here is to show you how your learning should be structured. You can extend this kind of progression to all data structure and algorithm topics. If you think this system of gradual progression will really benefit you, then I think you'll enjoy my course at Structy.net. I've designed the course to take you from beginner to advanced algorithms using exactly this system of progression. Instead of just making tutorials for elite code problems, I specifically crafted every single problem to build on top of the last. Every problem has a purpose. If you like learning visually, then you'll also love the animated explanations that are available for every single problem. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Following a gradual progression is important, but if you really want to take it to the next level, you need to know about this next step. Part two do boring variations. Everyone knows that practice makes perfect. There's a certain amount of repetition that you'll need to master any skill. Data structures and algorithms is no exception. 
This means that you should revisit problems and redo them, especially if they gave you a hard time before. This is common sense, but a lot of people don't know how to maximize this practice fully. There's something else you need besides redoing problems. If you don't do this, your study sessions will feel like a slow and frustrating grind. Don't only repeat the same problems as before. In addition, I recommend doing boring variations of a problem. Wondering what I mean? A boring variation is when we change the problem in a small or trivial way. The variation will still test the same core pattern, just with a slightly different framing around it. Time for an analogy. Say that you are practicing your three-point shot in basketball. You wouldn't just keep shooting from the same spot on the court, right? I mean, you could, but then you would only get proficient from that one area of the court. During a game, you'll probably need to shoot from other areas too. If you really wanted to improve, you'd mix up your practice. You might shoot from the corner a few times, then head on, and then from the other corner, and then possibly at the elbow. That would make you a good shooter. Back to the sport of data structures and algorithms. Variations are how you can mix up your practice for the same core algorithm. Let me show you what I mean. If the original problem is to find the total sum of values in a tree, then the boring variation would be to find the total product of a tree. This variation is nearly identical to the original, we just change the math operation from an addition to a multiplication. That's why we call it a boring variation. It's very similar to the original. These types of variations are valuable because they give you another opportunity to apply a concept in a slightly different context. If you struggled on the original problem and had to use extra resources for help, then you should expect to do much better on the variation. This is how you'll build confidence in your understanding. Let's go over a few other examples of boring variations. If the original problem is to find the maximum value within a tree, then the boring variation could be to find the minimum value of the tree. If the original problem is to check if a value occurs in the tree, then the boring variation could be to instead find the number of times that that value occurs in the tree. You get the idea? Boring variations give you another chance to check your understanding. I'm always sure to provide students I teach with variations in my courses. If the resource you're using doesn't have them, then I encourage you to craft them yourself. Just remember to keep the modifications simple. Like we said before, gradual progression is how you'll learn quickly. Gradual progression only requires very small changes to work. The best part is that boring variations don't take that much additional time to complete. This is because they're so similar to the base problems you saw before. Their learning gap is very low. You'll probably breeze through most variations. With variations like this, you'll be able to really drill into the patterns so they become second nature. Some people may think that these small variations are too easy and a waste of time, but they really do help firm up your knowledge. Think of it this way. The best case scenario on your tech interview is that you're given a problem that is identical to one that you've practiced before. By practicing variations, you're covering more of the possibilities that could occur on the interview. Your goal is to get so comfortable with the concepts that when you see a problem, you'll think it's boring. So why not practice in that way? With this boring variation strategy, a question I get a lot from my students is this. While we're spending a lot of time doing the same pattern again and again, aren't there a ton of patterns that we need to learn? Well, the truth is there are only a few that come up on interviews. In fact, some patterns are so disproportionately common on interviews. These are exactly the patterns that we need to drill in again and again with different variations. Here's what I mean. There are about 3,000 problems on leak code. One of the problem types I mentioned in this video was finding the maximum value of an array, link list, or tree. Of those 3,000 problems on leak code, 400 of them contain the literal word maximum. And you can see this for yourself. Go on leak code and search for problems with the word maximum. Maximum is a pretty specific word, and it appears in a ton of problems. Surprising, right? And that's not even the coolest part. The word minimum appears in another 400 problems. What this means is at least 25% of LeetCode problems deal with maximum or minimum logic. I don't know about you, but I'm going to focus on becoming godly with max and min problems if they're going to occur one in four times. Hopefully now you see why it's invaluable to drill important concepts with variations. If you base your study plan around using gradual progression, using boring variations like we spoke about, then you'll finally start to really learn data structures and algorithms, and it won't feel like a grind. If you want to learn about the three biggest mistakes to avoid when doing leak code, then click or tap on the screen. I'm Alvin. All I do is think about data structures and algorithms all day long. So if you want to hear more tips from me in the future, then hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.